Good day and welcome people. Thank you very much for joining the after party. Today we have a special guest here. It is Dani Barnat. Welcome, Dani. What's up, Club Group? Thank you for having me on. I'm super excited to be on your show. It's awesome that you finally did this. We all knew that you were creating cool content and uh, it was just a matter of time for you to do the face reveal. Thank you very much for all your support and everything you have done for me, even like even in the days when I didn't show my face. Um, for, for the few that doesn't know Danny, Danny he's a, a Twitter activist and, um, and an entrepreneur and he's, he's so many things. Like Danny, tell us a little about yourself. I'm just a normal dude, like everyone else. Um, and I just speaking our minds and uh, that's the way that information gets out there these days. Because we've all seen what happened with Mace, you know, all over the world that you can't just trust him. So I think citizen journalism has taken over. And uh, mm -hmm. not that we are special or intellectual or know or think that we know that's going on. It's just that we are speaking our minds and we are saying what exactly everyone is thinking. And I think that is why the alternative media is gaining so much traction all over the world. Okay, so you are definitely an activist. What we had planned for tonight is... We had a, um, a video that went viral on Twitter. Let me just put the desktop on for you guys. And here is the video. It's, it's about one minute long. Those who haven't seen it, we're going to play it now. Okay, so there we saw the video and um, obviously this video went, went viral on Twitter, especially amongst black Twitter. Black Twitter. Look at what the, the Afrikaans crowd is doing. And that also didn't stop Yakaranda FM. Let me just get to the right thing over here. Put you guys back on the desktop to, um, to also tweet about it. Watch shocking video of Afrikaans street fight goes viral. Now, it... The video is hilarious, but um, but like, why is the the people fighting being being Afrikaans? Like, why is that a factor? And that is where Donny decided to get involved. So, Donny, what exactly did you decide to do when you saw that tweet? As a club, club, like everyone, we're just tired of every single day that we log onto social media or that we read the news. We, we demonized 24 seven, we attacked, we blamed for everything. And just that day again, uh, I logged into Twitter and I saw this and I was actually disappointed because um, I used to work in, in the entertainment industry. I was in the television industry and I know many of these people at Jack Aranda and uh, I was just disappointed at uh, how low they went to like uh, um, generalize and, and say, make it an Afrikaans thing again. And uh, I just made a tweet about it and say, guys, why do you always go out of your way to, to drag our language through the mud? It's random Zef mm -hmm. people that's fighting in the street. And now you want to make it. Imagine that was done to any other culture in this country, the, the outrage that it would have been. And we just called them out on that. And luckily, uh, they, a lot of people started responding to that tweet and they took it down after a few angry people also voiced their um, just told him it's not cool man why do you always have to demonize us um if you can see what what happens on a daily basis to to afrikaans people white people minorities in this country it's just getting ridiculous 
and uh, they, they, they've been noticing that we don't take this, this shit anymore and that we will speak our minds and stand up for what we believe in and what we are proud of. And uh, that's just the uh, simple of it, man. So it, it reminds me of, um, of Ronaldo's live stream a few days ago where he, he spoke about the pain of having Afrikaans parents and how his, his wife laughed at him and the shame he felt when he pronounced Dallas as Dallas. And it, it is absolutely ridiculous. Um, they are attacking our language and our culture. They are removing it from the schools. And if it is, it is almost like the, the, the media wants to, they want anything, if, if they can say anything bad about Afrikaans, they know they will get clicks and they perpetuate this narrative that like Afrikaners in general are backwards and um, not very well educated when the, the very opposite is, uh, is true. I know there, there is like maybe here and there is, the, the, is there a bad apple in the bunch, but um, the, the way the media is going on about it is totally, totally ridiculous. Of course, man, it's, it's so obvious um, and I will never never be ashamed i'm actually very grateful for who i am and where i grew up from. i love my culture i love my people i love my language doesn't mean i don't like other people i love all south africans we are one of the most unique nations if not the, the most unique nation on this planet and uh, i just think it's unfair how they always treat us and we must just turn the cheek and turn the other cheek and just take it and uh, even with, with, with steve hoffman it's evident one can see how they go out of their way. And actually what they are doing is they, they're exposing themselves. But the, the, that's why the Afrikaans uh, struggle is getting traction all over the world because they make it so obvious and they always deny this. Yes. Where it's there for everyone to see. So they must actually continue to do what they do. It just works in our favor. So they must continue. I see the same thing happening with Afri Forum. Aaron's Roots had a tweet today. Where, where, where somebody took on, um, somebody had, uh, had a t-shirt on that said something that was like borderline racist. And the, the person tweeted, now look at this, this is typical of what the Afri Forum supporter is yeah. like. And it's, it's, it is just not true. Like uh, I know, I, I run in Afrikaans circles and 99.9% .9 of Afrikaners are actually super cool people. And they are trying to, to portray us as the villains. Dude, they need boogeymen. There are no boogeymen. So they will do, go out of their way to, to demonize us and to make us look like the bad people. So, and uh, yeah, that was Carl Niels, that, that clown from when Jacob Zuma's friend, the guy that always wears the camera. Yes, yes, uh, yes. And, he actually, and the, the photo that he actually tweeted was a photoshopped, very poorly photoshopped photo. So it was, so, but he's obviously a boomer. And he didn't yeah, understand yeah. to do a little bit of due diligence and just check into it. And he immediately thought, oh, I got my virtue signal for the day. I'm going to go viral with this. Let me jump on the bandwagon. And it's yeah. actually backfired. The, that guy, yeah. he, um, that is like norm skinning. What's, uh, what, uh, what's that? Defamation mean? of character. Defamation. That's defamation because he basically said, um, look at, it's Afri Forum. How can he in the first place prove that that person has anything to do with Afri Forum or that he is in any way associated with Afri Forum? But that's just how, how, how normal, normalized it, it has become to demonize Afrikaners. You can get away with anything. You can say whatever you want. There's no, but that's why I like that, that we, we don't keep quiet anymore and that we stand up when we see this stuff and people must do it. All the, all the people on, on social media. And if you ever see stuff like that, don't let nobody intimidate you. You speak your mind and you tell them exactly what you think of God. because we as Afrikaners, whether they like it or not, we also have a right to be in this country and it, it won't change. But Donnie, thank you very much for, for what you did and shining a, a little bit of light on the subject. And it, it, it was basically as a result of as a result of the public backlash that um, they decided to take the tweet down. I've, I've got it open in my browser, and they they took the tweet down and they renamed the the title in the in the newspaper paper article from an Afrikaans fight to just a street fight. And now they are reporting on the news accurately and fairly. So uh, thank you very much for you, for what you're doing. And um, if you if you want to get involved, follow Donny on Twitter and see what he's up to. And uh, maybe you can get involved too and be an activist. Yeah, I've never uh, wanted to be one. It, it kind of just happened randomly. I made a video last year that went viral about farm murders. And nothing special again. It's just telling my story like millions of other people have the, the same stories that live in South Africa that, that face these violent crime and on a daily basis. And obviously the 
first thing what what they came with is what about all the murders or what about the other murders of course i think if not more we are concerned about all the crime in this country that's why we are the, the loudest about these topics but obviously the format is the, it, it's it's clear as day that there's uh, motives different motives and the way that the people are murdered and i just told the story of my grandfather and what happened to me when i was young and we were attacked on our farm and again that was totally in, uh, in the heat of the moment i've never ever ever because i'm actually a shy guy i don't really like to be in front of cameras and uh, all that stuff and i i just decided to make that video that day because i saw that was the, around the time when president trump tweeted about what's going on and then immediately the media jumped on him and and, and i just wanted to again speak my mind and then just said a few words and it was from the heart and that video went crazy and uh, when that video came out i became public enemy number one basically mm. like an enemy of the state and you know what they did to us and all the campaigns that they i, I remember managed. i remember exactly and uh, that didn't scare us and uh, luckily for us with that it opened up doors and we've got very powerful people looking out for us and there's people all over the world that does care about what's going on here and uh, I think we must just keep the faith. Nothing lasts forever. The universe works in a strange way. And karma will catch up to all these people that are doing this stuff. And they know what they are doing. Um, and yeah, so people aren't fools. They can see for themselves. Thank you very much, Donnie. Let's head over to the comments real quickly. I'm, I'm just going to check all the at clip cops. Donnie, if you can see anything you want to respond to, like, go ahead. Um, I see the... Uh, Marisa writes, um, says, thank you, thank you, uh, Marisa. Um, and I don't think Willem has lost his way. I'm also very good friends with Willem and Clip Cop. We've all been coming a long way. Um, I really have so much respect for these guys. They are way younger than, than, than I am. And uh, they actually all started this, this alternative thing. And I think Willem is busy with other stuff. Um, he will be back on YouTube. Um, but just DM him out when he comes back. I think he's working on some interesting stuff that, that will be um, interesting and, and that will really help what's going on uh, and help with our cause. Um, and obviously, Willem got a girlfriend, so he's in that honeymoon phase. Honeymoon phase, you say. Um, let me just skip to my desktop real quick. <coughs> um, you mentioned... Okay, where am I now? Oh, I'm so confused. Now, um, what is the deal with um, Yakaranda FM um, not um, doing Steve Hofmeyer content anymore? And I also see that um, that Steve Hofmeyer also withdrew from Afrikaans is Groot. Can you give us any inside information on that? Well, what I know is just, again, Steve... I'm, I know him personally, he's a really good person. And what, whatever they always try and put out of there, it's, it's so ridiculous because if, if anybody that, that, that actually writes this stuff or talks about him actually spends five minutes and get to meet the guy and talk to him, they will see exactly who and what he is. And again, he just showed that he'll put other people's um, uh, belonger, well, before his own, he'll put other people before before himself, and he just showed how unselfish he is. Um, and I don't think the the people behind Afrikaans has got anything to do with it. In fact, it's totally mm. the opposite. They've always supported him no matter what. But it's it's obviously pressure from from the corporates, um, and uh, they didn't tell him to. He he did he um, as far as I understand, he he decided on his own that he, it's better for him to step away. But what what made me disappointed was in the other artists. I understand it's their livelihood and it's their work and everything, but you have to speak out when something's not right. Um, because if we're going to continue to keep quiet, we are co-conspirators in what's going on. So you, how do you go to bed and, and, and be alone with yourself if you know in your heart what is going on is not right and, and you had the opportunity or to do something about it or to at least speak out? And the, the thing is, the more they do it, the less they will attack and they will start backing off. But it's, it's that leap of faith. People must just trust um, in themselves and just go for it. And if, you, if something's not right, just speak out about it. Um, it's true what you say about Steve. Like I've communicated with him like once or twice before. And the impression I'm, I get from him is that it doesn't matter if you are 
the Queen of England, or if you are a guy that goes through the rubbish to feed himself every day, he treats everybody equally and he respects everybody. But um, on his Facebook, um, he, he left a, a whole explanation of why he, he is not performing at Afrikaans is Groot anymore. It is because Sun International Casino, they, um, they are the hosts for the venue in Cape Town. And they made it clear that if Steve Wolfmail performs, then, um, then they, will, they will not be making their venue available. And th that is why Steve made the decision of, like, you know, just fuck it. I'm not going to perform. Let the other guys do their thing. You guys have a good time. He knows it's a great event. He knows everybody, both the, the artists and, and the people that, that watch the concert. It's like a really, really great show. And um, it, it is being over-politicized now. And he's just going, going to, to leave, it, leave it be. He's going to continue with his small, his small shows or his big shows. Whatever he's going to do, he's going to continue doing that. It's a shame that that corporates have become so woke and that they insert themselves in issues that doesn't concern them concern them in the first place. Corporates mm -hmm. should be um, neutral. They should stay out of politics um, because what they are basically doing is pick sides and it's it's basically demonizing or alienating half of your audience or potential customers. Or I think it's it's the dumbest thing that they can do and it will backfire on them. The wokeness, this woke culture is too out out of control to control themselves. We've seen what happened in Canada with Justin Trudeau. It's probably the funniest story of 2019, what happened to that guy, the hypocrisy mm. and how it catches up to them. And eventually all these people mm. that are so hypocritical and virtue signal the whole day and tell you how, how, virtue, how virtues and how noble they are and how, how they are better than you and morally superior, all this stuff always end up catching up to them and they, they are their own worst enemies. And I think it's unfortunate for corporates because that it's the corporates who, who basically um, said if they're going they're gonna to withdraw and without them, they can't do the shows. So that was eventually what, what ended it all. And it all started again with a gang of trolls on Twitter that creates this fake outrage. It's like a gang on Twitter and they, they go around and, and target these businesses and then these businesses freak out and, and think that it's the majority of the people that but Twitter doesn't represent real life. It's, it's so ridiculous how serious people take Twitter and social media. I can't wait for the day where a CEO steps up and do the right thing and then just put them in their place and say that they uh, respect free speech and they respect freedom of association, which is, which is all of our rights. We understand when there's hate speech, but I've never seen Steve. I've, I know him personally. I speak to him on a personal basis, not in front of cameras or anything. I've never heard him ever talk about uh, black people or uh, in a lesser or like said bad things about them in the first place. He doesn't even talk about it. That's how ridiculous and how people can jump to conclusions and think that they actually know people. What do they know about him? They know what the media is telling them. That's, that's what they know of him. That's, like, that's what I said. I challenge people that has an opinion, go and meet him, go to a show and talk to him in real life. And then you'll see who he and, and who and what he really is. Okay, so, so just to summarize, I, I noticed some people displaying some anger towards uh, Afrikaans is Groot, the concert, because they're not displaying Steve anymore. And I also noticed that some people are showing some anger at Steve anymore because hey, he's not putting his foot down anymore. But the thing is, you should really direct your anger at Sun International Casino because they are applying this immense, immense pressure on both Afrikaans is Groot and Steve Wolfman to, that, to do exactly what happened now. And I, I, personally, I think Steve did the right thing because it's it, it's 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 turning out into like preposterous like size this big thing that isn't really a thing that was created by by radical leftists. Let's skip to the comments real quickly. Um, I think my chat of my, might have stopped. I see there's a lot of error messages on my YouTube, so um. I'm just going to continue. Donnie, you tell me you are a, uh, a avid Bitcoiner. Let me just see if I've got the right screens on you. Let me put my desktop on. Um, I'm going to. Here is the, this is the Bitcoin chart. Over the last two years, I think. Yes. Now we see this massive spike. And this is now where this big boom was. Where the whole world started investing in Bitcoin. 
and it started falling and now and, and it slumped down and it recovered Donny, you are an avid Bitcoiner. Like, what is Bitcoin doing at the moment? What should people know? I've been in Bitcoin for a very long time. I'm blessed. And I've got a lot of people into Bitcoin very early. Because again, I've lost faith in the establishments because at the end of the day, people get corrupted. And uh, we all saw how the banks operate and what they do go um, in collusion with governments and it's, it's all a show and it's a, it's a facade and I really like the mm. idea of Bitcoin and what it stands for and why it was created and I got into it before all this hype and all this stuff and I really use it for the intended purpose that was it was designed for not a store of value um, or an investment vehicle but a peer-to-peer -peer money to, to actually send money and move money. That's what, what it was designed for. And obviously people are speculating with it and it makes sense because there is so so little Bitcoin that there will only be 21 million. And, um, and it, it, Bitcoin proved itself over and over. I have more faith in people and maths than I have in governments and banks. So that's why personally um, I like Bitcoin and I don't claim to be an expert or a, a financial advisor or anything. It's just my personal opinion and uh, what I have found how useful it is for me um, using it. And it's just for me, it makes sense. So that is why I um, and thank goodness that I that I got into Bitcoin, because can you imagine if if now that why I speak out, if I did any corporate job, I would have been fired already. So luckily, I got involved with Bitcoin very early. And I'm involved with some software uh, companies that operate in the, the Bitcoin space and uh, in, we build infrastructure and, and we do stuff for the, uh, that will advance the, the crypto industry. And also um, a lot of people, I made one tweet about it um, and a lot of people still contact me. And I actually spoke to some of my colleagues in the industry in South Africa and I said to them, you guys should go on to, I must tell them to come on your show as well and come and speak to the people and give them the benefits because a lot of people, they don't trust Bitcoin because they've read a lot of fake news. They always hear it can be hacked. And that's basically, Bitcoin can't get hacked. It's exchanges that gets hacked or it's you that gets hacked. And there's a lot of false information about it. And uh, so there's uh, OTC trading is, is going to become a thing in South Africa. So that's over the counter. So you can go in person to a broker and go and buy from them. And you don't need to use Bitcoin. I can understand if you're not keen on volatility. There is stable coins out there that one can use. I don't really um, like st stable coins that much, but I think it's better than the RAND. And the writing is on the wall. Um, many people that, that are experts in this field already says that people should get their money out ASAP. Um, and I understand in, in today's day and age, uh, not everyone has the luxury of having spare cash just laying around. We all live by paycheck to paycheck. It's a tough environment. It's tough times out there. But whatever one can, just buy a little bit at least. And uh, the best strategy that one can follow with Bitcoin or with cryptocurrency, um, I, I don't really advocate for other cryptocurrencies. I just believe in Bitcoin myself. I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, as they call it. So the best thing that you can do because no one will ever be able to time the market perfectly is the mm. dollar cost average. Whatever you can afford to lose at the end of the day with all investments, just buy a little. Buy a little every single month and you will dollar cost average. You will not lose. I can guarantee people. You can go look back at the charts of Bitcoin over the years. If you consistently buy Bitcoin, little amount, little amount, little amount, you will make gains. And uh, I think the, the moment that the ANC, and they will do it, I don't think, um, I can't believe that it's actually people that still think that the ANC won't take land or they won't uh, loot the pension fund or they won't mess up the medical um, aid scheme. They will do it. And they, they, they and the, them and the EFF have two thirds majority. So it will happen. It's a reality. So people need to wake up and at least have a plan B, move a little bit of money out of the country if you can, because we have some of the strictest um, currency controls in the world. So that is where, again, where, where cryptocurrency helps a lot of people to legally move money out of the country and there's nothing that they can do about it. So we would obviously never advocate people to do stuff illegally. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, we just wanna help people out there because unfortunately with Bitcoin, it is the wild, wild west. So there, there is a lot of people that's taking advantage 
of this boom and this, this and then they take people for a ride and then they got a bad impression that it's bitcoin itself it's not bitcoin it's people um so yeah so again on my twitter if people have any questions i can point you in the right direction i don't charge money for anything I, it's not what i do i just like to help people and give and it's just my two cents again i'm not no expert i'm just telling you what i'm doing so people can do with that what they want according to me like you you mentioned um never in, invest more than you are willing to lose that that is a good rule of thumb when you go to the casino as well and um i've always said bitcoin is gambling and i still see it as gambling because you can't go out to the to the cafe and and buy a coke you know with bitcoin it is bitcoin was was intended to be like um a form of trade and an actual currency but now the people has turned it once they realize that it will never happen they are saying no 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 it's actually a store of value but um to, to me i i can't see i think if there is a future in cryptocurrencies it won't be bitcoin though but that is just my opinion so the bitcoin that, was bitcoin was very in its early stages and obviously with this economy or this bitcoin economy or ecosystem booming there is a lot of developers that's coming on board and that's building infrastructure that is actually what we are also doing helping overseas companies implementing stuff like this so that they can accept so to cut out all the middlemen so people don't lose out on all the friction by moving that moving there and selling it and then eventually because that's at the end of the day what most of the people do when they sell their bitcoin for profit the clever ones is they then go and spend it um so that's what we're trying to do to help them to cut out all the middlemen and uh, bitcoin is changing with the lightning network that's the basic um design of bitcoin is going to work perfectly because it's going to be so cheap to send bitcoin it's going to be instantly um virtually impossible to do fraud with because with credit cards you know they charge the merchants so much money on the processing fees um there's so much fraud when it comes to credit cards and paypal with reverse spending and all that stuff so bitcoin it will work that way but i hear you there is definitely other cryptocurrencies that works better than as a as a form of payment like litecoin and there's many others but i think bitcoin is like um the gold standard of the cryptocurrency because bitcoin at the end of the day dictates what's going on in the cryptocurrency and all and remember people made uh, altcoins to sell those altcoins for your bitcoin so the the main thing is everyone is accumulating now bitcoin is now in the accumulating phase though So even if you own one bitcoin you will be in the 1% of the world. Uh so that's how scarce it is. So don't think of even buying a whole bitcoin if you can't afford it just buy a little and buy regularly. Um I I I saw a tweet of yours that said bitcoin gained like 159% since January up until now 2019 which is amazing growth but like what is that stat stat say for 2018 like what was bitcoin's value in the beginning of 2018 and at the end of 2018 i don't have the chart open but it's oh, obviously the, I, 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 i can i can actually pull that chart sorry to interrupt you let, let me just pull the chart up so the people can see so 2018 it was trading at oh no oh, i can't see the figure at the top let me just move over here um 1st of January 2018 it was about 16000 and at the beginning of 20 of 2019 it was 3000 so the the people who who invested in this is actually where the massive massive hype came in yeah and the it people, was like in the media who jumped on it um they made it it was the media that created this frenzy and people got fomo and they all jumped in and there was not enough um buyers anymore when when the price went out of hand that um so obviously you never buy something that high just common sense will tell that to you just wait um you buy when nobody wants anything to do with it but now bitcoin is stable but i know for a fact that bitcoin will go up um by 2020 may is the next halving the, when the mining rewards gets half cut in half so the, basically the supply of bitcoin will be cut in half in, in overnight so you guys can go check for yourself over the years what happened every time after the halving of bitcoin and if you think what happened in 2017 was big it's going to be way bigger this time okay so to, to conclude this um donny's advice is um whenever you can afford when you have extra money buy some bitcoin 
my advice is stay the hell away but just lastly on the in the short to medium term let's say the, let's say the next three months are you bullish or bearish on bitcoin i'm very bullish on bitcoin up to now till 2020 into 2020 i'm very bullish um uh, the thing is how i got a many of my friends that was skeptical into bitcoin as well i said to them you you will go out at night and don't drink and by literally pee your money out. So take some of that, just skip one weekend of partying and buy Bitcoin and see what happens. And there's actually one of those guys that made more than a million that took that advice and, and he started buying when it was about 3,000 Rand of Bitcoin. That's when I told him about it. And uh, yeah, so that is a, if you, like you said, and I said, whatever you can afford to lose. So be, you waste money on, on stupid stuff that you don't really need. And I think the world is in a critical time now. And it's not only South Africa. I think globally people are, there's, there's stuff going down. And I think fun, uh, the, the economy will, there's something is going to, something's got to give. It can't go like this forever. So I think it's wise. And all, I also like gold and silver. I always love gold and silver, but it's uh, in the 21st century, it's a bit um, impractical. But I think there's definitely a place for the gold and silver will never disappear. But don't go all in on, get all your eggs in one basket, diversify, but just safeguard yourself. So there is at least something um, in case of a real emergency that things are so bad that you need to escape or something that you at least can buy a um, plane ticket, you know. Mm. Well, the, the people in the comments are complaining that the stream is lagging. I know my internet isn't, isn't the best and I, I think moving my stream back half an hour um, was actually counterintuitive. I see... Um, Willem Petter is in the chat. Welcome, Willem. Um, Brendan Campbell asks, at Clipkop, ek dog Malkop gaan nie wees. The thing is, Malkop said he will be on my stream, but for some reason he feels that Conscious Caracal deserves the first, like his first live stream will be on Conscious Caracal show. So I'm a little bit jealous, but you know, it just is the way, it is what it is. Like um, now, the xenophobia we see at the moment in the country. What do you think is the root cause? I saw that video. I, I know what the root cause is. It's, it's um, the politicians that keeps on blaming uh, other people for their mistakes. And there's actually a video of Cyril Ramaphosa on his campaign before he got elected. Where he said, that is the, when I, get, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it's... I'll go and look it up and post it. If anybody wants it, I'll send it to them. But he basically blamed foreigners for some of the hardships of mm -hmm. um, South Africans. And obviously, like we've all been saying, if they continue to demonize people, certain people of the population, something will happen. So I think that is definitely a cause. It's always a blame game. Um, and I think people are desperate in South Africa and uh, they are hungry and hungry people tend to do stupid stuff. Um, but I think also one needs to be also honest and condemn what what is being done. I think it's overboard. It's barbaric. Um, some mm -hmm. of the attacks, we've all seen the videos, people um, burning people alive. That guy that that was probably the most nastiest video I've ever seen in my life. The guy that, that one with the, the, the eyeballs. Yeah. Dude, Disgusting. that is that is bad. And I I actually said it to my brother the other night. Do you believe that we are so crazy that sometimes we go out at night in a country where that has such a high murder rate that crazy stuff like this happens and it can happen to anybody at any time. You always have to be on your guard when you go out. Check your car when you drive to not to not to get hijacked. When I get home, you have to check the gates. Make sure somebody's not following you inside. You have a gate that separates your bedroom from the living room. Crazy stuff like that. And uh, I don't blame people for leaving. And um, on that topic, I was actually saw something pop up and I knew it was a it was a, a, a um, campaign um, so coordinated. There's now this new page on Facebook, hashtag I'm staying. So they, so they, they are mm -hmm. trying to convince people to stay in the country. Um, and uh, it was so coordinated across the broad, board on a, um, all the mainstream media. They started promoting this as this. Uh, organic campaign that, that's starting to grow mm. 
Um, why are they doing that? Because obviously a lot of people are leaving the country and I can't blame yeah. those people. I'm not one of those people that criticize people for leaving. I can understand, totally understand where they're coming from, especially people with children. So many of my friends have moved this month in the past month to New Zealand, especially um, people with young families. They've moved and I can't blame those people. I can totally understand. So yeah, you guys must check out, um, I'm hashtag I'm staying. You'll probably see it a lot this week because it's obviously a coordinated thing. I think there is definitely panic because they see a lot of people are leaving, a lot of money is going out of the country, and that's the last thing that they want because uh, the more rands that get dumped and people get out, the better the rand will perform. And uh, they want to keep the people here to, like, us, we, we pay for everything, so why would they want us to leave? They will demonize us and bully us and uh, torture our people and uh, call us out for calling them out for doing this but they will never want you to leave so there you have it go check out the hashtag i am staying i haven't seen it myself yet i will i will go check it up a bit later for me the the xenophobic problem the the people that is committing the so-called xenophobia like i don't even think it's it has, has to be it, it can be called xenophobia because a phobia is something an irrational fear of immigrants the thing is the the attacks and so on they they justify it by by saying they are the the immigrants are taking the jobs of of the local people but that is exactly the same what is happening in america at the moment that is why they, they are building the wall because people are flooding the borders and all of the all of the the on um, the unskilled labor jobs gets taken and you said it earlier hungry people don't stay hungry for long so if 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 that um the low skilled labor market is totally totally flooded you're going to have a lot of hungry people running around and doing very silly things but i think the the it was conscious Carical who mentioned this and it is very much correct the the government now sort of has to choose are they south african national nationalists which they should be or are they pan-africanists because the the pan-africanist ideology is let the people in and the uh, south african nationalist policy is we need to um, tighten up control over the borders. I've seen a few media reports of plans that government is making to actually in, to tighten up the borders. But um, y you know what happens, especially Cyril Ramaphosa. He speaks out of his ass. He, he will say whatever is the flavor of the week, you know. And um, it's probably just to alleviate that pressure. Yeah, and I think also, uh, again, with, with crime, with farm murders, with the xenophobia attacks, crime is so out of control in this country that... I think it, it just like uh, snowballed. A lot mm -hmm. of people that that's opportunistic that took advantage of this uh, when the looting started. There's always looting when there's unrest and they get the first opportunity. Um, you'll see looting on large scales. Um, so I think it's it's a very complicated thing. Everything about South Africa is complicated. Everything is not as it seems with many of our issues. And I think. Uh, just giving it the names in a phobia, like you also just said about the phobia. I think it's 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 something that's definitely. I don't know what the real explanation is. I wish I knew, but we know how things are in South Africa and how easy things can can uh, spiral out of control and snowball. So I think there's so many elements regarding the xenophobia, and it definitely snowballed. And um, it's true what you say, uh, but the ANC is always like that. They want their uh, they want to please everyone. They want to pre please the East, they want to please the West. Uh, when they're in front of these ones, they'll say this, they want, uh, uh, when they're in front of the, those ones, they'll say, say that. And I think it's the same with the Pan-African movement. Africa, one Africa, and uh, maybe uh, imagine how nightmare it will be if there's one Africa, if it's one country. And that's that is what, what kind of a lot of people are fighting for, which is very scary. That is why I say Cyril Ramaphosa is a puppet. He will dance to the tune, whoever's pulling the strings, at that moment. To be just... honest, I don't really think Cyril Ramaphosa actually runs this country, to be really honest with you. Let me switch to the desktop again. What do we have next on our little list? The Democratic Alliance. Did you watch the by-election results, Don? I just see every day on Twitter, some of the Freedom Front Plus guys are saying uh, how they keep on winning by elections. I actually watched Ronaldo's stream the other night where he said it doesn't mean anything, it doesn't mean anything. He, he, he must blame Ronaldo must blame election fatigue for their bad results. 
I think it's like what we discussed earlier, it's the wokeness that caught up to them. They made their own bed, so they need to sleep in it. And now all of a the sudden they want to take action. But Ronaldo and them must actually embrace it. it it's not something bad. Um, they've got competition now, so they can only approve, uh, improve of this, but they must decide now what they want to do. Do they want to be a populist party? Do they want to be woke? Do they want to jump on the race baiting bandwagon? Because still they haven't take, take any action against Van Damme. Uh, they yes. have all that stuff. They just hope that people will start forgetting about this. And you guys, especially Willem, you, um, Devin, most of you guys with a following on social media are a direct, um, you guys had direct uh, influence on, on the DA because you guys were the first ones who were really exposed on the things that they did, especially Willem with that um, Schweizer Rienicke uh, uh, feature. And that was disastrous for the, for the DA and that cost them dearly. And even wow. I see Helen like distance herself from the DA because she also saw that they're going in the wrong direction. And, and the DA, and to be honest, I, I don't, I'm not really keen on any politician of, in this country. I don't have respect for any politicians anymore because they all really only care about themselves. They get this fat salary mm -hmm. every time in parliament. They, it's a joke. Our parliament, they know it. It's like a comedy show. They get nothing gets done in parliament. It's always a comedy show, a circus. I would be ashamed if, I, if I've been a politician in this country and take it that big of a salary and what uh, in, this, in South Africa is in the state that it is. But that just shows you that politicians only care about themselves. They will tell you exactly what you want to hear when they need you. When you have done, finished voting for them and done, they, and then they're done with you and then they're just going to continue what they are doing. But I think it's good, uh, back to the point, it's good that the DA is losing and that, that people are punishing them for, for what they did. So you, you mentioned about the, the state of our parliament and I can really agree with you that, that it's turning into an absolute shit show. But I think the, the correct word to use um, in this in this case is um, parliament is being decolonized and this is what you see when you get a decolonized parliament. What you see out on the streets with the people killing each other and police doing nothing. That, that is what happens when you decolonize your justice system. So, um, and for the... For the near predictable future, we, we are going to see a lot of a lot more decolonization going on. Yeah, sorry, um, I just saw a comment here uh, from ICE that I said blaming the media for Bitcoin's fall. So if the media talks about Microsoft, Apple or Amazon and stop buying their shares. No, I didn't say the media was uh, to blame for the fall. The media was to blame for the pumping of it. They got people hyped and they got gave people FOMO. It was when uh, the media jumped on that's when it really bumped. And I think you misunderstood me. I didn't say that they were the reason for them for um, for the dump. But getting back to that, um, I actually saw when the xenophobia stuff went down a couple of weeks ago. There was a, a video on Eyewitness News that Eyewitness News made where they followed some of the police officers. And I feel mm -hmm. for some of the police officers because they did an excellent job. Um, I can understand it to, how bad it must be to be an honest, hardworking police officer in this country. Um, everything is, is broken. Um, infrastructure is broken. Uh, there's no, they don't even have bullets. I don't have enough weapons. I don't have enough staff. And there was really some police officers that, that they, those guys put their lives on the line and go into that madness where we sit in the comfort of our home on, and then give commentary. So I also think that we can't blame all the police officers. There is definitely some police officers that, that really put their lives on the line to, to uh, keep um the law and order in the country but obviously again there is a lot that really don't care and that don't even want to be police officers in the first place they just there for a salary and we saw some of those videos and we we've been inundated um as south africans with outrageous stuff i don't think a lot can shock us anymore we, we've seen it all well moving on to our very last topic you know, I've known Dani Barnard for a while and like Dani is everybody's friend. Dani doesn't have any enemies. Now, lately we have, um, we, we've seen an, an onslaught on, on loving life. Now, I have spoken out against loving life before. This was back in February when, um, when I noticed that there was like a lot of fake news coming from his channel. But um, recently, Ronaldo tried to like get this movement going where 
where we really start like we we have to like attack him and i don't re- fully uh, agree with that like, what's your views on loving life i agree that that sometimes he and i don't think he, he does it on on purpose i think he really does want to help south africa he, he um and sometimes he just gets information and doesn't do his research and just put it out there and that's actually a bad thing because it, it jeopardizes the whole movement because one such fake news can destroy everything because then they will always use that against everyone you know how it is um so but i think um his heart is in the, in the right place he's at mm-hmm. least he's doing something and good for him and, and like i said i don't really fight with people um a lot so i i respect everyone's views not everyone can and will agree all the time many of us who are friends don't agree on everything but i don't want to be a thought police and, and force my views on anyone else or they it's it is what it is and i think politics around the world lately has become very serious business um it's like a team sport now it's either you are with us or you're against us there's nothing mm-hmm. in between so and people are taking politics very seriously lately it's it's definitely getting almost dangerous uh, especially in america the the left versus right over there it's getting and, and crazy i actually watched a brilliant documentary today of someone that, that took somebody from the left into a mm-hmm. trump rally and uh, had him interact with with the trump supporters there and it was the total opposite that the, the trump people were loving inviting listen talk we were nicely and when they did the right the opposite and went into the other side it was a nightmare it's just like literally that npc meme is the funniest thing because it's exactly how they, they are because if they can't argue they just go on and they, they sing this this uh, stuff over and over and they shout mm. over you and, and all that stuff so yeah it's it's, it's crazy times man uh, the the political scene has never been this alive or at least my lifetime I, i'm not that old but especially where i saw things are getting crazy man there is definitely um new challenges heading our way now to to conclude this this let's not call it a debate this discussion to conclude this discussion what is the way forward what do you see happening in the future for south africa and for south africans in general i think uh, if I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm a positive person. I always want to look at everything at the, in a positive light, but I also are realistic. And I know that, unfortunately, the ANC and the EFF has a two-thirds majority. And mm-hmm. we all know how stubborn the ANC is. They will never listen to anybody. They always, in their minds, right. They never do anything wrong. All the apartheid, Jan van Riebeek, and the list can go on. Black people are exceptional. And and I, I I think people must must see the reality. There's no way that black people in South Africa will not vote for the ANC. It's their revolutionary part. They'll mm-hmm. never. I they even look at at Zimbabwe with the people starving. They still went out and vote for the Zanu PF. That did those horrible things to them. It's scary. So I think in reality, unfortunately, South Africa will or needs to hit rock bottom first before anything can change. So I think definitely that's going to happen. The moment they take the first property, it's over. It's, it, yeah. it's, it's going to immediately, there's no property rights and that's going to crash the economy. And once the economy crashes, then all hell will break loose. Or ESCOM will collapse first and that will mm-hmm. also collapse our economy. Or the economy will just plainly collapse when they start looting the pension funds and, and, and. so. Unfortunately, I'm not very uh, optimistic about South Africa um, because our politicians, not a single one will take responsibility and do the right thing. Uh, we had it on a platter. South Africa is, has so much opportunities in this country. It's such a vast country. It's big enough for everyone. And you can see with the job thing, even with PE, how ridiculous it is in the first place. Why are mm. you so short-sighted? Why do you want to create jobs just for a certain part of, the, of your population? Why don't you? It's want to racist. Make, why don't you want to make everyone rich, give everyone jobs, then everyone will benefit at the end of the day. We must create so much jobs in this country that we can actually import clever people to come and live in this country yes. and work in this country. That's the mindset that they must have. But unfortunately, so now we have the opposite happening. It, it's, 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 it's a competition the whole time. And it's, uh, 
it's it's reverse uh, apartheid and then it's like revenge and uh, you must pay for what what people did in the past and all I that really stuff and, and as soon as that mindset can go i think things will change in this country I read an interesting article the other day. It said that um, there are now more black professionals leaving the country than white professionals. And that that one statement tells the, the whole story. It will it shines a lot of light on where exactly is the problem. And it's definitely not white people holding back jobs. And I feel so for those black professionals because you know how, how it is. If those people speak out, they immediately get demonized. Oh, yes, their community that doesn't take shit. Very, very, they, they don't take shit at all. They will go to those people's houses and, mm. and beat them up. So I feel for, for the black professionals. I know there's many mm. of them that, that feels exactly the same as, as we do, but they're just too scared to speak out because their consequences are very harsh if, if, if they speak out against the revolution and the ANC or EFF. Look how, how bad they are to each other when, when um, they, they just go to a, to a, to on a different narrative than then they, what they believe. They attack and say the most vile stuff for each other. And uh, yeah, so I, I feel for, and I also watched a insert by, by um, God Blanche about the same topic and it was actually a black lady that, that lives in, in, in Australia now. now they also mm. left because her husband was killed for a cell phone or almost killed for a cell phone. He was shot. Went and, and at the hospital, when, when they got to the hospital, there was no, nobody wanted to help them. And that was the night when they got red pulled and said, okay, enough is enough. And they did an interview with her in, in Australia and they asked her, will you ever come back? She said, never, never, never. It's actually funny. I'll send you that clip. It's very funny. And um, I also saw another interesting thing. Um, there was this programmer who made this website and uh, he actually shows a graph of how people are immigrating so you can see and you must see the spike in 2018 as soon as they started talking about taking property rights um, and all this stuff it spiked and it's not only white people that's leaving it's all mm. people people that that want a better life for them and their children and they want a peaceful life and not into this politics and why do i have, why must everyone be against each other like I said, it's a team sport now. Either you're with me or you're against me. It's government rhetoric that creates this divide. And I think that that is a, a great place to leave it. We are just under one hour. Like, I noticed here on the, on the live stream itself, like we are lagging at least seven to eight minutes. So like replying to, replying to comments might be a bit difficult. Like Donny, is there anything that you can catch over there now that you want to reply to? Um... I see Ronaldo is here. What's up, Ronaldo? And Willem is also here. I'm happy to see Willem actually woke up. Willem actually invited me to, to come and watch the rugby with him yesterday. And it was during the day. And I said to him, there's no way because I know how it is. And I'm not a very big fan of alcohol. Um, the older you get, the worse a bubble house gets. So I said to him, I'm not going to make it. And I saw and he, he, they, they went hard last night. So I'm very happy I didn't go yesterday. And then Willem Ronaldo, promised... Willem promised me a video on Steve Hofmeyer and the whole Afrikaans is great thing on our last live stream and it just never happened. Like, Willem, what's happening? Yeah, um, I also saw another interesting comment just came in now from Yaku van der Merwe. He said Steve made millions of rands for, for Sun International for decades. And that is true. He used to be at Sun, Sun, what's that, uh, Sun City at the Super Bowl, saw that place out time after time and this shows you how easily you are disposable how easy it doesn't matter how much money you make for them if they need to throw you under the bus it will happen they just want to be in the good books of whoever's in charge and the best thing is all these journalists media corporates who are sucking up to the ANC now the, if in an alternative universe someone else is in power they'll immediately be those people's best friends. That is just how fake the, the corporate and the woke culture is, unfortunately. Yeah, work for pay. Now, but Dani, thank you very, very much for joining me. I think that, that is a good place to leave it. I did promise the viewers um, a closet reveal at 1000 subs. I think I'm, I'm going to do that right after I disconnected with you. But um, thank you very much for, for sharing your insights with us and it'll be great to have you on again. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
uh, for having me on and uh, I, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of the channel where when it grows so I can also say one day to my children when the channel has <laughs> hundreds and thousands of subscribers that I was on there and uh, again respect to you to Willem to Ronaldo to Loving Life to LMS Tactical to everyone 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 who speaks out I've got massive respect for you I have mm. so much respect for people who speak their mind and who are not scared to be bullied into a worldview that they do not morally agree with. So always trust your gut feeling and always speak out when you feel something's not right. I love your positivity, man. Salute. Thank you. Uh, exit full screen. I must still figure out how to disconnect this call. Okay, they're done and disconnected. Stop video. Now I can put my face back on. But guys, my internet is like really, really bad. There I am. Guys, my internet is like super bad. Like, I don't know how many minutes the chat is behind the actual video. I can still see I'm scratching my head over here. But I did promise you guys a closet reveal. So, um, before we do that. Before we do that, as per usual, for this whole live stream, I did not smoke one cigarette. And I, I noticed there was a, a comment from Ronaldo, something about vaping. Ek gaan saam gaan vape as jy rook. Jy kan my vape, bro, jy kan my vape. Pitskit, wach, let ek rook. Ronaldo gaan jy saam rook. Ok, you guys were talking about each other. Dagbreker mentioned something here in the in the comments um i had a chat with a, uh, with a domestic she says that the foreigners are buying up the lands in the locations her neighbor is from maputu he built a wall on her side of the land and hooked her water and hooked her electricity she outright said she hates them because she asked the municipality to help the the, the thing is this is what happens when you speak with a with a forked tongue on one side, the foreigners are the problem, the foreigners are coming in, and on the, on the, on the other side, we have this free trade zone, we have pan-Africanism, it's one Africa for all, and the problem is you can't have your bread battered on both sides. And um, now they are facing the consequences. Uh, I, I would actually like to say that um, I'm sitting back and laughing, but it, it is no laughing matter. There is people getting killed, there's businesses being burned down, and um the problem with especially like like the drug dealers etc etc there's a whole bunch of criminals like out here from from foreign countries but what happens now is the the foreigners that come here that actually just try to make a living on a, in a good honest way they are the ones whose businesses are getting destroyed and attacked and killed and it's it's extremely sad and like I can sit here and rant on YouTube all day about the problem, but I don't really have a solution either. Um, I always said um, we should build a wall. I still believe we should build a wall around the the old Cape Province. I, I think we should have um, we should have had tighter immigration control back in the day already. Then this problem wouldn't have existed. I still believe we should um, have immigration control for the for the Cape Province now because later we are going to sit with exactly the same problem. But um, we will only probably know that within the next three to four years, unfortunately. I didn't even like my cigarette. Ronaldo gave a 100 rand super chat. Thank you very much, Ronaldo. Like, there was no even message with, no message with it. Christoph Smith. Uh, Christoph Smith is here. Thank you for joining, Christoph. Um... Uh, what parliament needs are better clowns vote zacp people if you if you want to do like the the most stupid thing on earth like go put your vote in for the purple cows the purple cows they they are bigger memes than car planter like it is it, their whole approach to the thing like we are fighting against mainstream media. Mainstream media is lying to. Listen to us. When the whole ZACP is formed by ex-mainstream media people, it's it's actually laughable. Just go read up a little bit on their people. 
You are being played for the fool. Uh, IFP is going full anti-socialist. That is why I think, um, like, in the past, Freedom Fund Plus and IFP sort of got along well together, and I think they they, they are only going to um to grow to grow tighter together because um, IFP does have self of at least the Zulu has self determination, and um that is what the Afrikaner is tr is striving for. I'm having Vainat Bosov on my show on Wednesday. Like, I don't know if you guys are excited are as, as excited as I am, but I am super excited. Like the him and his cronies, can I say, have been um have been doing the self determination debate for I don't know how many weeks, how many years, how many months. And um there's a lot of a lot we can learn from him and I have a whole questionnaire. I'm definitely not going to reach everything in one show, but he says he'll he'll come on again, it's no problem. Um Loving life is a rumor mill. I don't think we have to like I hate on loving life all that much though. The thing is is the what I notice is that most people realize that loving life has a lot of like fake bullshit on his channel. But it's um he he is you, you must give it to the guy. He is super super entertaining. And the other thing we have to re realize is that he is part of the community, whether we like it or not. Like we, we can't just say, yeah, but Loving Life is not part of the community. Because he is. He reports on South African news. He he distorts the news uh, sometimes a bit more than little. But he's part of the community and we have to deal with him. You see, uh, over here, it still shows Donnie next to me so there is a lot of lag in the stream there's no way i'll be able to like respond to comments in a quick time but i think i'm going to do that closet reveal now Want ek het het probeer naslaan, ek het het net nie gesien nie. Maar dit, dit is nou nie die eerste keer dat, dat ek hoor dat iemand so iets sê nie. Maar, um, kom ons dit gaan my camera op, dat ek kan sien wat jylle kan sien. Bum, bada, bum, bum. Ek moet net sê, kom, my piepiesak hier is toe. Ek is kaam vir my piepiesak hier. O, oh, jylle wou so graag gesien het, nou, hierso is hy. Mooi op. En hierso is hier veel in nie. Daarboor is een tykelad box. Ek, ek kan net nie daar bykom nie. Ek kan my leer en klim my op. Dan, um, ek weet nie wat daar binnen is. Hierboor is een, is een ouwe rekenaar. Ek weet nie echt saam wat hier binnen is. Auwe, kijk wat ek. Hier sê hier iets. Check my series. The real live stream is over, guys. This is just talking cut for it. Thank, thank you everybody for subscribing to me. One thousand subscribers. I'm um. I, I never thought I would actually reach it. You know, I started making videos just because I was bored. But um, thank you for everybody who promoted me and who shared my stuff. And although I hate Ronaldo, he like played a cardinal role in me reaching this position. Thank you very much. So now you get to see what's in my closet. Here we have Jack Paddle, the Nacht van die Lang Pitter. And here we have Jack Paddle. What's this album called? I think this is just a self titled album. More Jack Paddle. And the first, the Antwoord that came out, like, I am a bit of a Zef Gat. It's just the way it is. I like the Zef styles. Uh. Over here, this is the microphone and the audio interface box I'm using. Here's another old microphone from back in the day. I used to play a lot of guitar. Here is a power supply. I used to study electrical 
a digital trace oscilloscope. Here we have another oscilloscope. We have a function generator over there. We have electrical cables over there. I'm a coin collector. That box is way too heavy for me to pick up. But there's a lot of coins in there. Uh, yeah. And I think that's pretty much it. I revealed what's in my cupboard. There's nothing exciting. Just a, a bunch of junk of yesteryear that most people keep in their cupboards. You hate me. Uh, just like you are ashamed of your Afrikaans parents. What was the, Did you use the word shame? You said the pain of having Afrikaans parents. In, in that way, like, I hate you. It's a love-hate thing. We love you, Ronald McDonald. Like, dude, I had this, your previous live stream, like, it actually got me angry. So, I chopped up your video into little parts, all the little pieces I wanted to respond to. And it ended up just like the pieces that you were in that I wanted to respond to was like half an hour long. And I just thought, fuck it, I'm not gonna like make a whole... I didn't say that. Well, the video is on Twitter, you know, like I, I did tag you. Wait, I can actually play it. I didn't say that. I know you're talking. Um, let's go to my profile, tweets and replies. Here we go. For those of you that are old enough and you are Afrikaans, let me ask that question. For those of you that are old enough, and you are Afrikaans. Did your parents call Dallas? Remember when it was on TV? Did they call it Dallas? Oh, no, man. Dallas, because every time I say that, my wife laughs at me. But I remember my Afrikaans parents calling Dallas Dallas. You know, like Balas, they used to call it Dallas. <laughs> That is exactly how you pronounce Dallas in Afrikaans. Dallas. Owns one in Dallas, Texas. Dallas. Why would your wife think this is funny? It's, it's this, it is exactly the same when, that's why we call, we, we don't call France, France. We call France, Frankrijk. We have Dallas and we have Dallas. We have France and we have Frankrijk. But here comes the beauty. Yeah, Maxon says, Aish, so t wife, she won't understand. She won't understand the pain of having Afrikaans parents. Hold on, hold on, hold on. She won't understand the pain of having Afrikaans parents. Oh, wait, again? Understand. She won't understand the pain of having Afrikaans parents. The pain of having Afrikaans parents? I automatically dislike you because you are a follower and not a leader and somebody can think for yourself. So you form part of this group think cuck mentality. That let's be real, a lot of Afrikaans people suffer from. A lot of Afrikaans people have this Hold on, hold on, let's get that again. That let's be real yourself. So you form part of this group think cuck mentality. That let's be real, a lot of Afrikaans people suffer from. Let's, let's hear that again. You can think for yourself. So you form part of this group think cuck mentality. That let's be real. A lot of Afrikaans people suffer from. A lot of Afrikaans people have this group think mentality. Okay, so now you, Ronaldo Goes, you, you tell me, like, what did you say and what didn't you say? Because, like, I've got video proof here. What did I say that was wrong? Like you are ashamed of your parents calling Dallas by its proper name. What was the context? 
all the, the, the thing is, this is this is Ronaldo's default go-to. You took me out of context. You took me out of context. I challenge everybody, go watch the video. I did not take him out of context, you know, like I can't add like 15 minutes of, of extra video just to just, just to prove that like this is definitely in context. It it is it is just it is what it is. He is ashamed of his parents teaching him to say Dallas when his wife wants him to say Dallas. Like, why the hell would you like put up with your wife laughing at you for pronouncing Dallas in the way that your parents teach taught you? And it, it's it's actually pronounced properly in Afrikaans. Dallas, that is how you pronounce it. Cray my op the show. No, dude, there's like a. There's like a like at least a seven eight minute delay. I'm gonna have to start a new stream. Can we do that maybe? Because there, there's like a massive massive delay between the between the chat and what what you are actually. <laughs> Ronaldo is fuming. Set my up now. Set my. The, the thing is like I, I played the video. I played the pieces over and over again. So like everybody knows. And the thing is, it is, you like to like backtrack, you know, that's not what I said, that's not what I said. For example, like, like, oh, the, the, um, the, the DA supports this. No, the DA doesn't support that, just go Google it. <laughs> oh, operate and set my fucking up now. Dude, your caps lock key is stuck. It, it's yonder on, over here. Let me show you where it is. There's the caps lock key. If you press it, you, you, you type in normal letters again. Ronaldo will opkom. Ronaldo. Okay, 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 okay. So, I, I think um, I'm going to shoot Ronaldo an invite. Let me see. Where's my, my Zoom? New meeting. I said my op yo Ronaldo is fuming. Oh minority mess, how are you doing? Use another computer audio. Okay, oh no, I must Okay, I must first switch my now here's the thing. Um I'm gonna put let's put my desktop on and um let's just say leave meeting. I'm gonna move it over here so you guys don't check. The, uh, you guys can probably check it. Um, a new meeting. There we go. And invite. Now I say copy URL. Now I'm briefly gonna show whatever Ronaldo texted me in the last. But like it's nothing we can be ashamed unless he blocked me. Okay, here we go. Um. Put my ugly mat on the screen. I've been going for like quite a bit over an hour now, but you know it's 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 all in good fun. So now Ronaldo has you know, here we go. You've got your DA cap on. I, I don't want to check. Is your audio coming through? I can't. Like, there's no audio coming from your side. Let's check if your mic settings are correct. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Now he's going to say the problem is on my side. Okay, but um, I'm I'm getting nothing from you, not through the Zoom app, and not to my OBS, and not one of the two. So I, I really think it might be your side, bro. The Zoom app, and not to my OBS, and not one of the two. Hello. So I, I really. Now I'm getting echo, a lot of echo. Not to my OBS, and not one of the two. Hello. So I really. Now I'm getting echo, a lot of echo. Not to my OBS, and not one of the two. Hello. So I really. Now I'm getting echo, a lot of echo. Not to my 
Mic check one two. Can you hear me? I can you hear me? Um, I can yourself. I can myself record the audio. Okay, this is actually no buy a bit. Okay, there we go. There we go. Zoom two participants. Boom. I just want to get your face like a center. Okay, but I can't put you more center. You look a little annoyed with your DA cap. Hello, do you have anything to say? Um, I'm not annoyed. Can you hear me? I can hear you very clearly. Can you hear me? I can hear you. But I could be hearing my good eyes so that my earbuds come and say. Dit draait is om so te praat. Ongel kan sêk as hoe ook praat, hoekom en nou nie? Ok. So, hoekom is al so groot die leid is nie aan my? Of het alles gehad? Wat ek kyk hier so. Die delay is as gevolg van my internet, ek het nie a dedicated line nie, ek deel het met ander mense, en ek denk mense het sêk in movies gekyk op die sondagavond, en met al die buffering het die minuut teruggekom en so aan, so dit is nou maar net ongelukkig so. Ok, so gaan terug na die heel eerste ding toe wat jy gesê het, ek, wat het ek gesê, ek is, ek spuit oor my ouwers, of ek is... Ok, well, um, the pain, the pain of having Afrikaans parents, do you think it's painful having Afrikaans parents? It's a slang term to describe when you saying, like, you know, when you are 10 year old and your parents... Uh, mock you by saying love you bye like that's what i'm talking about in afrikaans culture is ons maal om dit te doen want ons kinders um jy het sy gat te laat jik want dis wat hulle doen so dit is wat ek daar wat ek daar bedoel het het was net a joke om te sê dit is jy weet afrikaans parents 101 okay so um so like, why exactly do you, do you find it painful that your parents um, spoke about Dallas and not Dallas? Because obviously you guys spoke Afrikaans around around the house, right? And your parents were con pronouncing the name correctly. In Afrikaans, it's pronounced Dallas. No, that is not right. What is what is Dallas? Dallas. Dallas is the Afrikaans. It's uitspraak vir die woord Dallas. Ok, so met ander woorde, die Amerikaanse area Dallas is nie Dallas nie, in actual fact, dit is Dallas. Nee, exactly now, so do you say Amerikaanse, or do you say American? Nee, maar nee, dit is woorde wat geskep was, daar is nie een woord wat geskep was vir Dallas nie. Die ding is, dit bot hier die selfde gespel. Dallas Afrikaanse version is nie fucking Dallas nie. Dallas in is Dallas. Wat is jou Afrikaanse een vir New York? Gooi om my kant toe. Dit spreek ons New York uit. Dit spreek ons vir New York uit. Is New York sy nieuwe een nieuwe wat, ek weet nie as wat die York is nie. Anyway, so ek het my punt gemaakt, het jy jou punt ooit? Ja, my punt is dat, dit was clearly tongue-in-cheek jokes wat ek gegooi het, en toe moes jy het nou hardop ernstig maak. Precies die selfde, toe ek op hy self die stream gesê het, dat ek dink, dis nogal, sal interessant wees, as jy miskien jou livestream kan change na hier voor, of hier later, so dat ek ook jou stream kan sê. Dat is nie een ding om jou weg te jaag en te sê fok aan en jy kompenteer met my nie. Het was net een genuine ding waar ek stou belangstel om jou streams te kyk. Ok, wow, wow, wow. Nou, in die verlede, ek het nou al geleerd dat jy, jy is eerst gesubscribe tot my nie. So, jy volg in die eerste plek nie my stream nie. So, fair enough, jy het nie geweet, ek stream op dinsdag aande nie. 
Maar ik ben, jij voelt ook zoveel so, so van de volk dat, um, je weet, jy, die, die streams wordt geboekt door mij, maar die, die enigste manier. Ik heb gezegd, jullie niet begin, Waar je jullie niet begin gezegd, ik heb geschreven op jou. Jij hebt op jouw live show, weet je, gesubscribed naar mij, jij hebt eigenlijk gewijs op jouw stream. Is zo, dat ik even wijs. Jij is nou gesubscribed, ja. Ik heb die nou gesubscribed. Nee, ja. jy, jy, op jouw laatste livestream. Daar zo het ik nou net gesubscribed. Ik dit wijs dat ik gesubscribed is dan. Op jouw laatste livestream heet jij, terwijl jij zo'n voor mij een gym, subscribers kreeg op een 1K. Toen ze toen ze als toen ze zien als oh, let me sommer subscribe as well now while I'm here. But anyway, the the thing is. Like, I, I did my due diligence, like, R Ronaldo does his live streams on Wednesday, like, fine, I'll live stream on Tuesdays, no problem. But then, like, Ronaldo is most in this fucking super chat mode, like, every second day has to be a live stream, so, like, now your super chat frenzy is, like, infringing on, on my Tuesday live streams, and I thought, like, I can either be a little bitch and, like, ah, oh, please, Daddy Ronaldo, won't you please keep Tuesdays open for me, or I can double the fuck down and book my show the same time as your show. I didn't do it on Sunday nights because I do believe your Sunday nights live streams are really up to par and it's high quality and it's very entertaining. But your Wednesday nights live streams is really up to shit substandard cuck. That's where I make most of my money though. Are you serious? The, 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 the thing is, if, if you make most of your money like streaming substandard cuck, you know, like go, go for it. Can't <laughs> like, do If you make your money of Hoe kom het alles nou skielik verdwijn? Hallo, 1 2. Kan jy hoor? Kan jy my nou hoor? Die ding is as um as as jy die meeste van jou geld maak vir jou woensdag aan live streams, dan dan is dit nou ongelukkig so. Dan moet jy nou maar aan gaan. Ek het dan ek ek weet vanaand jy het oor jy het oor 'n uur gegaan en ek dink ek het ek het 'n stuk of 20 Ik kan eigenlijk naar de analytics kijken. Toen de stream begon was er zo'n 20 mensen online wat zo'n bias zwak was. Een verhouding met mijn vorige twee, drie streams. En ik kan ik kan eigenlijk hier zo zien exactly wanneer je opgestreamd het, wanneer die subscribers opgesprongen het. Zo, so, dat is nou die die overlap. Dat is een trend 50-50. 50% van die mensen was bij mij geweest, 50% van die mensen was bij jou geweest. Van van mij mensen wat mijn livestreams kijken, is de die helft eerst voor jou gekeken. Zo, so, daar daar is het divide. En ik stem samen met jou, so, so, ons moet je weer touch base so, met elke, met mekaar elke nou en dan. Maar als dit, as dit geval is van wie ook al wil livestream, moet je even bij Ronaldo per muziek krijg. Um, ek weet het, ek is nie altemaal keen vir die idee nie, jou. Het gaan nie oor per muziek nie, waar sê, dit, dit het letterlijk uit de plek uitgekom van, ek like om jou shows live te kijk. So dit was niet een kwestie van, ek, Wil hy, jy moet skyf, want dis my tyd nie. Gee nie fok om oor dit nie. Ek like om live op jou shows te kyk en comments te lever. En het, ons al twee op die selfde tyd anders, kan ek dit nie doen. So, okay. die ding is, ja, maar die, die punt wat ek wil maak is, dit was nie om jou aan te val en om jou te dreig nie. Dit was letterlijk net om te sê, kan jy nie miskien dit een uur later skyf, of een uur vroer nie, maar dan kan ek ook jou show kyk. This Dude, your, your, your tone was so condescending though, like the, everybody that watches that little clip or like actually yeah, like that, that was fucking super like, could you remember, maybe like 7 o'clock? So that like the, there's no conflict between the people? Like you speak, you speak to me like a fucking 8 year old bro. Why? Yeah, I think you don't be a little bit of a gevaar daar Anyway, so okay, so now what is the way forward? The, the thing is, there's absolutely no way I am moving this coming Wednesday live stream with Vainant Bosso. That, that is, I don't like, I, I know I'm a Vainant Bosso fan, like everybody might not agree with me or him or whatever, but I'm a huge fan and I'm sticking to my time. I'm not gonna fuck him around. We are set for Wednesday yeah. night, 8 p.m. But that's fine, but just let me know what times you do your things on a Monday or Tuesday so that I can um, not do it at those times. The thing is, don't you want to like move your Wednesday live streams to a, a little bit on because you are constantly late and you are never prepared for the live streams. 
I'm a minute or two late. Oh, hell no. I am. Okay, well, we can check this in the future. Maybe you will become a little bit more aware of this. But it, it's, it's almost like it's like, ah, oh, fuck these views, you know. I can just come on when I want to. Let these nias wait, you know. Let, let them sit there with their cigarettes behind their computers for, an, for half an hour or 45 minutes. I'll like, show some respect to your audience, you know, that they, they go through the effort and time to like, to go say, ah, oh, it's Ronaldo live stream, right? But it's almost like you, you feel your gut in the life, understand? No, but it's not that. It's about... The reason that I want your show to be before or after is that if I have 150 people on my stream, then I recommend they come onto your channel afterwards because that's the way that I want to support it. And if you stream before me, then you can do the same. Well, you can go, guys, Ronaldo is going live now because that is, you know, what we do. It's about us uplifting one another. So it wasn't a case of you need to move because you're taking away viewers from me. It's not the case. It was merely the case of me trying to help you and you trying to help me for us both to grow. That's what it is. Okay, do you understand also my reasoning that um, the me doing shows on a Wednesday night, 8 p.m., that wasn't my action. That was my reaction. For what? For booking your for, for for doing live streams on Tuesday nights 8 p.m. Yeah, I, that that's my fuck up. I'll take that. I I wasn't aware that you actually so we streamed can, on a Tuesday night. The thing is, I I, 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 I did not. The, 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 that's the whole thing. Like I must like break away from the cut the umbilical cord. You know, like I, I can't like text Ronaldo every time. Listen, yeah, I'm I'm like doing live streams on Tuesday now. You know, you've got your own fucking life. You're busy with. Your um, your ward over there, and you've got your own personal life. You've got your own YouTube channel, etc., etc., etc. Like uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't want me as a chat texting you about like what I do every day. But um, the, the the purpose was to like make you aware that I'm actually like doing regular live streams now, and like I'm pretty sure you are well aware at this moment. Correct. I'm well aware now. Yes. No, my two. And the, the reason I, I have my shows on Sunday nights, I, I used to have it at like half past nine and moved it back a bit because like the people were really complaining. This is very, very late. So I thought, okay, maybe there's like a little bit of overlap, but you know, like usually you are concluding at nine o'clock at least. But the show is called the after party because it's after your show. Like I'm totally game for this idea of everybody working together. We don't have to like agree on anything. We can like disagree fully, but... We can like just like, sh like sort of show show a little respect for each, for each other's times, and um, we can also help each other in that way. I'm I'm all for that. I mean, like I said, I <coughs> for the last two weeks now I have randomly like some nights it'll be a Monday once, next it'll be a Wednesday or Thursday. Um, my two core live streams is on a Wednesday at eight o'clock. And Sunday at eight o'clock, and then mm. I have these intermittent streams that I wasn't aware that you were also building your own solid one on. Um, and I will gladly move my time for those ones because that's your time. And I apologize if I overstepped in on those times, but I didn't do it to try and fuck you over. That's the difference. You know, I, I, I realized that, and the, the reason why I didn't try to fuck me over because you didn't even know that I that I was live streaming at that time. But like, I, I still need to decide though, do I want to like do a Tuesday night 8 o'clock or do I want to do a Wednesday night after the Ronaldo show? And the thing is, like, I, I know you, you don't smoke loving life all that much, but I really, really want to turn my channel also into a community channel. So maybe the guys in the comments, you can type a, a, a T for Tuesday or W for Wednesday. If you, if you would like it, on Wednesdays after Ronaldo's show, well, on Wednesdays 9 p.m. It doesn't matter if your show is finished yet. I'm going to start at 9 p.m. If you wanted Wednesdays, type W. Or if you wanted Tuesdays at 8 o'clock, type T. Oh, then the delay is so much. We're going to have to check this afterwards. Who the hell won? I'll maybe get like Twitter also to respond. But the thing is, not everybody on Twitter watches my YouTube. And not everybody on YouTube is that watches YouTube is on Twitter. So I think it's best that the YouTube community decides oh the, it's not so bad like every like i've got two wednesdays 
IZN Minority Mad. I smoke that like, like Cape Town is representing, and I, I know a Minority Mad is it's um is is from the Western Cape. And it's, it's kind of strange, like, and how many, how, how few people are actually from the Western Cape that is active on Twitter? This cop. And, uh, like a life, that's why. You don't have time okay. to watch YouTube. So we have Wednesday, Wednesday, we have either, and we have either, we have another Wednesday. Okay, so it, it, it seems that the near fork, right? I see. Um, okay, so, like, with, with the few votes that we have, it seems like it's going to be Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Like, I really don't mind if you... Like, I know sometimes live streams are, are, are lacquer or whatever, and you can go over your one hour, but just know, like, I'm going to start streaming at 9 p.m., and that's just the way it's going to be. And that's fine, because then at least after that, I can tune in, and I can also ask all my subscribers to go over to your channel, which is the and, point. Um, the, the, that is actually what I discussed with both Willem and Contra Scarical on my live streams. Is uh, I would really like the guys to commit to like one day in the week, like have, have either a program or a live stream or something, so that the audience knows that that there is like, say for example, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Sundays is YouTube nights, you know. And um, it, it's it, it's really a wonderful community. The people are active in chat and. Everybody is having a fun, uh, having a lot of fun, like a bit of banter here and there, but it's it's all in good faith. And um, uh, I know it seems very much that we hate, really hate each other, but it's it's not really the case. We direct message each other on Twitter every now and again in good faith. So don't worry too much, guys. It's only when we act physically meet when we will physically fight. But otherwise, you know, I'm not all that interested. I, I can't hit you. <laughs> Yo, who would move a guy in a wheelchair? That'll be so wrong, bro. <coughs> uh, you can hit me. I don't have a problem with you, Flip. I think you're entertaining. I think you are doing what I wish I could still be doing, which is saying fuck the Sufi and all of that type of stuff. So you, you're doing great work because you're doing work that I did 10 years ago. And I think that we need somebody to continue that work. I'm not trying to, I'm not talking down on you. I'm saying uh, we need to have somebody that can continue to do that work and uh, rage and be angry and do what, what Randy used to do. That's what needs to happen. You, you mentioned last time that, um, that my style like reminds you of Randy. The, the only Randy videos I have ever seen in my life is, it is though there's like one or two of you that's current that's currently on bit shoot you know we're like pump the muscles or whatever that is all that i saw about rendy ever, ever in my life and i can't concede like the, the the style of video like i'm um, getting angry you know um it is a but it is a good are, are, no but those videos were aimed at like trolling so those were trolling vids any any video i did um with on overseas people with trolling videos right that's why mm -hmm. I did the whole muscle thing because it's like he was always the guy that I was trolling was heavily into his like steroids and heavily into his like gym. Mm. He stood like naked in front of a mirror and they would make shit. So those videos in context, it's me mocking him and, and me basically creating memes out of him. the old videos that I'm referring to is the political videos where I would start off by saying Julius Malema is a cunt. Like that is the videos that, that I'm talking about. And then I would say what a danger he is to South Africa, what he's done and, and how this is detrimental. So that's what I was referring to. No, not my videos that focused on memes, but on the pol political side. And it's good to see. It's a good suit on you. It fits you. Yeah, yeah I, I even had the book bar for a while to make me look a bit more aggro, but it got itchy and it got pimples and stuff. So I shaved it off. But the other question is, is it real or not? The thing is, the me getting angry on camera is, uh, I wouldn't act that way in normal society, obviously. But the, the thing that Panyasa Lusufi does, it, it did make me angry. And we are trained from like, when we are little kids, you're like, you don't express yourself that way. But, you know, it is, if you put that on a video and, and, and put it on YouTube, it's it, it's a whole different thing, you know. It's 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 very very entertaining. So it is, 
I, I am actually angry, but it's, it's not like I'm that type of angry in real person. But the thing is, it is real. I, I am angry. And I, I don't know if you checked my video on the banning of the old flag. And that was pretty much the same. And I was actually angry. Like, why would they do this? Why would they be so stupid to do this? Yeah, that's pretty much how I was. So I, uh, a, a news article would come out where they sang Kill the Boor. And then I would like ready my camcorder. I would put it on and I would drop F-bombs. I would like be angry. I'd be shouting. I'd be like, making threats. That's the old mm. Rendy videos. And then I got a lot of positive views, a lot of uh, like subscriber base growing. And then after about 40 of those videos, I sat down and I said, okay, cool. I get the message out there, but what am I doing to fix it? Mm -hmm. I'm not fixing it. I'm complaining about it, which is all good and well. And then I decided, well, I need to go into politics and change it from the, from the core. I need to go mm -hmm. down to where the problem is and fix it from there. And, and I was stuck I in the DA, that, shame. No, but what I'm saying is when I started doing that, it was like I couldn't drop F-bombs anymore. I couldn't threaten Julius Malema. I couldn't do those type of things because that's, that's not what it, I'm not just uh, d um, representing Ronaldo Khosna. I'm representing the Democratic Alliance. So I had to tone it down considerably. The, the thing is, the, at the time when you joined the Democratic Alliance, I can understand why, why you joined the Democratic Alliance, because the, they used to be like, I, also, I feel that they used to represent me like years ago. Like, how long have you, been, have you been with the Democratic Alliance? Since 2012. So the, that is a good seven years. Seven years ago, I would have said like that, like the, the Democratic Alliance sort of represents me, but it's... And, and obviously you are going to disagree with me now and tell me I'm wrong. But um, I'm pretty sure most of the people in the chat as well will agree with me. They, they went off the track. They, they, they are like full, fully blown, like going for socialist policies now. They are trying to pull it back now these days, but I think it's just too little too late. Like the DA has really, really disappointed spe specifically white South Africans. They threw, threw us under the bus. Watch this space. Watch this space. Oh, well, you know, um, uh, please, like, it, it, it would really be amazing if, I'm, if, if, if you guys can prove me wrong. That, that, that'll, that'll be the, the best for me and the rest of South Africa in general, if you can prove me wrong. I, I really wish that you guys will go out now and prove me wrong. Watch this space. I'm watching. Let me just light my pipe in a lot to show you how a proper man does it. Mm, like a like a conquer. Anyway, club, yeah. So I can I can move on the stream. I can. But I get what says that I can buy a buy a I can buy a trot South Africaner. I can live my heritage. I can I can create rande. I can South Africans are the big coins that may fascinate. But my family from the high tide for my gehouwet and for the nageslachte and nageslachte is it aangegee. So, you weet, ek, ek het dit. Ek vecht vir wat ek in gloe. En, jy weet, ek is een liberale persoon. Maar, mm. ek gaan ook nie die hele tijd oor geloe praat dier mense van die ANC en die EFF wat my groot, my klei, groot klein ouders, of klein, klein, klein ouders op my wil neerdring. So, dit gaan mm. ook nie werk. So ek is lief Afrikaans, en as ek een grap maak, kom het vanuit een plek van liefde, kom jy uit een plek van haat uit nie, so wanneer ek sê, my parents embarrass my met hoe hulle dalla sê, kom uit een plek van liefde uit. En ek sê, you are not giggling now when you say the word Dallas as it's properly, properly pronounced in Afrikaans. Ja, dit is nie. Okay, besef my New York and Afrikaans. Who say you New York and Afrikaans? You said it New York. The, 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 that is one of those words okay, that, that, that you just say the same, you know. Frankrijk and France. Paris and Paris. Amsterdam and Amsterdam. England and England. Yeah, but Dallas is Dallas. Dallas is not Dallas. No, no, no. Dallas is Dallas. Like yeah, if, 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 if Dallas was Dallas... Ballas would have been Ballas. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what? Nee, dit is hier het werkie. Superior logic. Word jy so baie dankie dat jy my geskakel het, ek denk ek moet ook nou hier so kort snuie wat ek al, ek gaan, ek gaan nog steeds boor jou stream volgende boemsdag, want ek gaan nie vir Wijnand Bosse van die steek laat, he. en, um, oh, fie, ek het gesê, jy kan maak wat jy wil, ek het dis net, ek like om jou streams te kry, en ek like om vir mense na jou, na jou stream toe te stuur, maar is dit te veel is vir jou, dan, jy, as jy nie meer wil help nodig van my kant af heen, dan sê nie het so, Laat like, ek, 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 ek verstaan jou, jou renasie, hoekom jy dit is so'n baie fijn gevoel gevind het, en on, ondou net, so die, die acht uur streams was a reaction gewees, dit was nie a action gewees nie, maar ons was nou mooi a, a hard to hard gehad, en wat, wat, en wat nie, so ons weet nou wat allemaal staan, nou kyk ons maar, hoe gaan dit nou hiervan naar voren toe, hoe klink die? 100 bedonde. Nou, maar toe, wanneer het ons vir Loving Life op die kanaal? Wat? Hoor jy so, ek kan sien, jy is moeg, ek wil ook, ek wil ook, um, wanneer het ons vir Loving Lives op die kanaal? Wanneer trek ons om in? Loving Lives, of Loving Life? Ja, ja, het is in die enig een van die twee maak saak, hoe, hoe jy hom wil beskryf nie, ek, ek het net nou met Dani gesin en gesels, jy, dit maak jy saak, hoe baie fake news die ou stoot in die, in die interwebs in nie, hy is, deel van die community, of is het nou like of nie, is en hy is daar. Hy is daar, en hy maak ons werk baie moeilik, want hy vat al die werk wat ons doen, um, en basically trek sy broek af en kak op dit. Want elke keer is hy een fake video uitbring, dan is het jou reputatie, my reputatie, um, Willems reputatie, Conscious Caracol's reputatie, wat uh, mense, die weet na, quick uh, question, want hulle sien Loving Life met sy 51.000 subscribers, so hy, hy kan ons nie lieg nie, hy het so baie volgelinge, en dan praat hy kak, en mense kom achter dis kak, en dan gaan hulle na Ronaldo's channel toe, en sien hulle Ronaldo het 1 of 53.000, ah, hy is ook maar seker net soos die ander, so hoe kan ons omgloe, en dan gaan hulle na jylle channels toe, van die 1000 of 2000, en hulle gaan nie wel hierdie mense obviously try well, ook nou definitief op te kom om af te praat. So, ek, ek dislike nie vir Scott nie, ek kan sien hy is een nice ou, hy is een oud toppie, hy probeer help, maar op die einde van die dag sit die ou waar ons sit, hy niks beter met sy leven om te doen, as om goed te maak oor Suid-Afrika nie, en die probleem is dat jy moet, daar kom een punt van, wil jy een video uitsit omdat jy glo dit is reg, of wil jy video uitsit, omdat jy acht videos uit dag, uit dag wil uitsit, en net seker maak dat allemaal iets weet, dat jy goed uitgebring het, en dan Kijk, verify jy dit nie. Kijk, ek, ek, ek jy geef vir Scott meer benefit of the doubt, as wat ek vir hom geef, want ek is redelijk oortuig, hy weet van baie van die goed, wat hy uitsit, is kak, dat hy het ek liggen double check, en dan denk ek, ja maar, dit, dit is nie so sensational nie, dit gaan my nie so baie views kry nie, kom ons spin het op hierdie manier, so bijvoorbeeld die EFF ding, die, die prentje van wat iemand om geloof vir hom geemail het, ek is oortuig, hy het gaan goed opsik oor Zuid-Afrika, hy het hierdie oud berug gesien, en gedink, ja maar, hmm. hoe kan ek hierdie berug gebruik, om sy sensational nieuws te maak, dan ek, oh wee, en soos het ek gesê het, hy het nie een keer gelieg, in sy, in die hele, as hy rechtig waar, dit van een anonieme source afgekryd in sy e-mail wat ek al, dan, dan sou die kak uitgekom het, maar die manier waar, waar hy by alles bevoord, dit is altyd op die, op die limit van, soos in, ek, dit, dit is nie alleen nie, maar fok, dit is amper, dit is, dit is, dit is asof hy het beplan, ek, ek voel hy weet wat hy doen. In media noem hulle dit, um, die woord alleged, Die manier hoe die media en journalists kan uitkom uit die lawsuit uit, is om te sê allegedly. So, hmm. allegedly, Ronaldo goes, uh, shot his gun at a bystander. You know, hmm. as jy dit gebruik, of allegedly, Ronaldo raped somebody, right? So, draai jy dit gebruik, dan kan niks ten jou gedoen word. So, hy, hy doen die tactic wat hy, o, ek het net die nies gekry en het gelees, en ek het nie tyd gehad om het te verify nie, maar hy, dit lyk of het fake is, is, so allegedly so dat ek, ek my weg moet, maar wat dan van die 2000 mense waar hy video gesien het en nou die kak glo, hoekom breng jy nie een volgende video uit en sê luister mense, as jy hierdie video, video gekyk het nie, dit was een pop kak, hoekom doen hy nie dit nie, want hy wil nie sy credibility langs die kant gooi nie, dis hoekom. 
credibility. Net af en toe aan het Die die ding is ook ik 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 verstaan dat um, die die deel van iemand wat nog net beginnen um, achterkom van die groot probleem wat in Zuid-Afrika is en hulle hulle sien ja maar ja maar die mensen praat eindelijk kakke wat ook al maar die sy core following is een daar is baie overlap tussen ons al drie en die mensen hoor die algemeen hulle weet hulle die weet nog die hele tijd dat daar is baie van die goed op Skatse kanaal wat ek klomp kakkes weet maar dis Dit is nog steeds fucking, dit is, dit is, hulle gaan vir die entertainment value, jy weet, so mense is nie so stupid as wat ons dankie, jy weet, so hulle weet wat Scott is vol my rey. Maar is die, Scott het nie entertainment value nie, Scott lees die nie. Ring de bel vir updates! Ek kan, ek kan ach hier, uh, wat ENCA aansit, of wat ook al, en ek kan nie skryf daar, hoekom moet ek luister na een man wat een fucking e-mail lees, en dan, as die e-mail fake is, wat nie geverify is nie, dan lyk het kak op allemaal van ons, want het lyk, omdat hy deel is van ons, die groep wat oor Zuid-Afrika praat, Unfortunately. Hy, ja, ons val in hy, in hy category, en dan is een mens, wanneer hy die grootste binnenkort sal raak, die grootste Zuid-Afrikaanse reporter, en mense sê, wel is hierdie ou kak praat, dan moet al die ander ouwe seker ook maar kak en dit is wat my kwaad maak. Het maak my nie kwaad dat hy 100.000 subscribers gaan kry nie, wat my kwaad maak is dat mense om eerst te gaan vind, en dan sien hy praat kak, en dan gaan hulle nie oor mense soos jy en my worry nie, want hulle dink ons gaan die selfde kak praat. Oké, daar deel verstaan ek. Um, ek dink nog steeds, ons moet ergens, want ons is soort van een neutrale platform, dat is, met, dat is met die ou kant begin communikeer, wat ek al, maar hoe dit ook al sê, ek is nou amper toe hier aan die gang. Ja, dit so jylle, Jylle kan dit doen, hy het my geblok, hy communikeer nie met my nie. Jy weet, livestreaming meer as een uur lang is een big no-no, en hier is nou al amper twee uur lang. Ek wil vir allemaal gesê wat, wat gejoin het en so aan, vir al die wat gekom het van Rinaldo's kanaal af, baie dankie dat jylle gejoin het, en um, ek sien jylle volgende woensdag, ach hier, en wel net vir die helft van jylle, aan die helft van jylle gaan Rinaldo kyk, maar volgende woensdag, ach hier, dat ek verwijn in het bos, of ek is nie seker, wat het jy beplan vir woensdag? Um, ek het um, a prostitiet op. A prostitiet? Ek sal, 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 ek ek sal, ek sal, ek sal, Maar anyway, baie dankie vir allemaal wat ingeskakel, dankie vir Renaldo dat jy, dat jy ook ingetune het, en dat is nou een bykie van een hard to hard gehad het, ek dink dat dit is, um, Dit is actually nog, nogal greid dat ons het sommer live doen, dat sommer dit fucking face to face kan doen, jy weet, vir die ouwense wees, ons is met een salut. Hoor jy so baie dankie ne. Net een plezier. Cheers man. Ek moet nog fokkel uitvieker hoe my hier ding neertel sit, rechtsbo, maak toe, end meeting for all. Boom. Ek maak daar so toe. En ek maak hier so oop, sê dit op my gezicht. Hoor jy so mense, baie dankie dat jy ingetoond, ek gaan, ek gaan, ek gaan miskien gewoon, ek, Ek weet nie of daar gaan comments wees, want die fucking livestream gaan al so lang aan. Clubkop, ja, jy sal skat met contact. Um, ek het hem al van tevore gekontak. Hy het die ding gehad van, hy het gesê, ja maar, een mens kan nie meer ammunitie koop in Zuid-Afrika nie. Toe wou ek vir hom fucking like, so, skat, I've got urgent, urgent news you. Toe wil ek net vir hom vertel, het is een woordie, so mens kan nog ammunitie koop. Het is een, die ouwe wat vir jou die e-mail gesteer, het kak gepraat. Maar, either way, baie, baie dankie ouwens die nou ingeskakel, ouwens en vrouwens. Maar na dat die meid is, is dan ook jy so baie dankie dat jy hom ingeskakel het. Dan um, sien ek jylle volgende week woensdag.